Hello and welcome to the arena. Today we have a special one for you today. It is episode three of the starter decks dual area the new starter decks we're going through them all one by one and seeing which ones are worth playing and which ones really aren't and i'm actually recording this after i play the matches because wow this deck takes some time to get used to especially on how to use rusco clockmaker we're going to be getting into matches showing you exactly how this deck is supposed to synergize together but at first i was losing 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 and uh, there's no way with the types of cards that are in here, this deck should be an easy winner. But you have to remember that Rusko is the center focal point of this deck. And it actually is very hard to lose with if you use this deck correctly. And my God, when you learn how to use this deck, it's very fun to use. Actually, the most fun I've had in starter decks in a long time. Let's talk about this. First off, we're going to talk about Rusko because this is the center focal point of the entire deck, as stated before. When he enters the battlefield, you conjure a card named Midnight Clock onto the battlefield. And Midnight Clock is not only a mana rock, you could tap one blue, two generic, and you put an hour counter on him. But what does an hour clock do? do well when you get all the way around the clock and hit the 12th hour you shuffle your hand and graveyard into your library and draw seven cards you must then exile the midnight clock well that works really great with breach the multiverse because you're getting your best cards onto the battlefield this deck is a mixture between a kind of strict control build where you're using murder to kill things, tribute to Urborg to kill things, Rona's Vortex to get rid of threats, put them on the bottom of the library, or just pick them up for the turn if they have a lot of counters on them, etc., etc. And a mill deck, which is using things like Phalagi Archaeologist to mill some cards, put a non-creature card, uh, mill this way into your hand. The Academy Wall that draws and discards cards. You also have the Meld Web Curator, which gets an instance or sorcery out of your graveyard and into your, uh, onto the top of your library. And then the Halo Charged Scab, which mills two cards. Then you may put an instant sorcery or battle card from your graveyard on top of your library. So you're getting those synergies with getting cards into the graveyard and then back out of the graveyard. Uh, in order to deal with immediate threats on the battlefield. And we could kill almost anything in this format, in this limited environment. There's no real planeswalkers to deal with, so we don't have to have a way to deal with planeswalkers. So murder works out just fine. I would rather have go for the throat, but hey, beggars and choosers, these are free decks. You also have things like Until the Necropolis, which you're milling three cards, putting two cards into your two creature cards from your graveyard into your hand and the rest stay there but as said the scabs get things out the curator gets things out you're going with the philology archaeologist who is getting things out and plenty of control in this early part of the game same with the vohar so why all this milling why all this digging through your library well your library is not really important because if you look at the midnight clock one more time, you realize that your hand and your graveyard get shuffled into your library, and then you draw seven cards, which means that <laughs> you can have five cards in your deck left. You can have milled yourself all the way down to five cards, but once the clock strikes 12, you put it all back into your library, and you start the game fresh with a brand new hand, and your opponent has whatever they have left. A lot of the time, you are playing a mana, and you're passing the turn play a mana pass the turn you could block with rusco it doesn't matter if this dies it doesn't matter if any of our stuff dies as long as we can get good value against the opponent with the things that are dying i am fine with death on any of these creatures especially Hitsuku and kairi which could get a free breach of the multiverse if timed perfectly because whenever he dies yeah, deal damage equal to the card that's on top. And then if it's an instance or sorcery card, you may cast it without paying its mana cost. It's a free breach the multiverse to try to get your Rusko. <laughs> yeah, and you're stealing a lot of the opponent's stuff as well uh, with, the, with, with Breach of the Multiverse as well as Vesuvian Mist. 
If you pay two, you can return a target non token non-land permanent to its owner's hand but if you kick it you could conjure a duplicate copy of the card that you return to your hand so you can steal some of the opponent's stuff like that you'll see in the video that that works beautifully in a few of our matches <laughs> it, it's fantastic there are a couple of cards that i would say are a little bit weaker in here like the the bone cobbler i didn't see it as very helpful but I didn't use it that much, but I see the utility of it where you could cast creatures from your graveyard after you make them artifacts. And <laughs> it's goofy. It's, it's goofy, but it, it's actually very helpful. Uh, overall, wow. We'll talk about it at the end of the video. I don't want to spoil anything, but let's just say that this deck is a lot different than what is on the surface. There's a lot more going on in this deck, and it is quite hilarious to play well thank you for joining today make sure that you've liked the video and subscribe to the channel and let's get into episode three see you in a minute no black mana but if you know anything about me i always draw mana we do have three sources so we aren't getting mana screwed let's keep it like this for now we are on the play, which is great. Opponent. There it is. There's the black. Archaeologist. Scab goes to the bin. But we do get Verona's Vortex, which is fine. We got the Bone co uh, Cobbler. Another Verona's Vortex. And... We don't want that Bone Cobbler out quite yet. And besides, it's really nice to hold up Tribute to Urborg. There's the Phoenix. Huh. We really want to put that on the bottom. So we're going to let it happen for now. This is that Gruel deck. It's kind of fast. And again, we mana. And we pass opponent. Five cards left. Colossal growth. Sweet. We get another card out of his hand. He kicked it too. So that was definitely move in the correct direction. Academy wall seems important to get down. And we know uh, tacky. Move on to the opponent's turn. And a Dragon Well. Good card. Tapped land. And we go back to my turn. More mana. That's actually fine. No attacks and end the turn. <laughs> the, the very typical mana pass selection for Magic the Gathering. Hope you are enjoying watching me play manas. Kick it. Kill it. And we will definitely take that action and we will discard. Um, <laughs> that one. Awesome. First I was afraid. I was petrified. But then I realized that uh, it's a game. And we gonna win. Philology Archaeologist. Black Sun's Twilight comes to the hand. And uh, that's it. So we got a 0-3, a 0-3, and a 0-5 on the board. Down to two cards. Going to my turn. Yep, that's fine. Drake. And pass. Oh, no, no. You guys don't need an attack. Just pass. That's fine. <laughs> Just do smart things. Sprouting Goblin. These guys are a little bit of a pain in the butt. 
He can get more land out of here than he can sack lands to draw cards. Ah, uh, huh. Let's return this. You aren't going to be able to hit me, buddy. He keeps trying to burn these spells, and I don't mind him burning them all. Epic confrontation, epic confrontation, colossal growth, three tricks down. Oh, yeah, <laughs> he burned another card. That is awesome. So we're going to discard the swamp. And he plays land. Perfect. We even get a mana. That's incredible. Go with the Curator. We're going to grab Tribute, put it on top, and then swing for two in the air. We could actually start being a little bit aggressive here, which is fantastic. Mana and nothing else. What? All right, we take the block. There we go. We didn't even get to play the game over and over again. Come in with these two. And now it's all about literally time passing by. Academy wall. And pass the turn back to the opponent. Down to 16. Mana. That ain't gonna do it. Don't know why he's still here, but hey. He is. He's stopped decking. He's having a good time. He's having a blast. Welcome to the arena. <laughs> oh, you know what? The mist. We want to have that. We would love to draw that. He drew a card. Well, what is it? He's going to play it, right? This man is still trying. I love it. Do we have any creatures in the bin? Not yeah, well, we can. <laughs> uh, okay. Why don't you put that on the bottom of your library? Um, we're gonna take the action. The mist can go away. Awesome. And pop in for what is that? A lot? Down to one. Okay, what'd you draw? Ah. Uh, well, let's show you that you never had it. Take the action. Uh, okay, tribute can go away. There it is. <laughs> That's the game. Swing all. Man, oh man. <laughs> Daddy figured out how this works. <laughs> oh, yes. I love it. Falaji Archaeologist, Velespian Mists, Meldweb Curator, and Rusko in the opening hand. Rusko in opening hand is phenomenal. That's the card we want. We want him to be doing things early on. Start the game over a little bit fast. Maybe, hopefully not too quickly, though. Because we need to build up a board state. There's Behold. Behold, the multiverse. I wonder if this deck could almost be like a milled deck. It would be the slowest uh, milled deck in the in the history of mill decks, but it could still probably do the job decently. He uses Bushwhack to grab a planes. We drop mana and we pass. All right, mana. Benelish Knight Counselor again. Luckily, he could only swing here. He can't enlist. You can't enlist unless neither creature has summoning sickness. So that's actually a positive for us. We go to my turn. Yep, that's fine. Murder. Ooh. But let's get Rusko moving. We get the Midnight Clock, and now we no attacky. You've got 12 turns. You're on a clock there, buddy. 
smite. And we lost the archaeologist. Which tells me that Gix's command is going to be happening. Juniper. Unkicked. We did not. Oh, wait, wait. We don't need it because, right, this is a, this is a mana rock. So we're good to go, man. Mm, do this. Destroy each creature with power two or less. And then each opponent sacrifice creature with the highest mana value. Sacrifice it. Yeah, that's what I thought. All that work, and it is for naught. Yep, we're up to four on the midnight clock. That means we've got to get our spells out of our hand. Citizens of Rest on the Shoemaker. That's really bad for us. Let's get the Curator down. Let's get Gix's Command up to the top of the library and move on. Forest. I kind of don't want the Midnight Clock to go off now. Uh-huh. Let's have the opponent sacrifice and then we're going to put two 1-1 one -one counters on this gains lifelink for a turn down to 13 we're at 26 wow a uh, second citizen's arrest this is both bad and good if that makes any sense I wonder if we could get a second one of these. I think we can. Return that. We can. Oh, that is fantastic. Wow. <laughs> I love it. That's fantastic. What is there not to love about that? What just happened? That That is great. Infinite cards for us, baby. Five. The citizens are us. You're going to grab him again. <laughs> oh, you poor fool. You poor fool. All right. We're going to scab. It doesn't matter because we're going to be putting this all into our um, library here in a second. But whatever, we'll get a damage off. And we got a scab, so he's nice and big. He's a 4-4 four, four body. Yep, <laughs> there's our new hand. Only one mana. I want a mulligan. I was afraid he was tilted out of the game. One, two, three, four, five, six. We want Drake for sure. It's got good music and everything, right? Awesome. And the Academy Wall. Okay, so Rona definitely coming in next, but the opponent's gonna scoop very soon. Down to seven. What a what a what a play line. Infinite midnight clocks, especially if the opponent keeps doing that. And he just passes back to us. Mana. Rona. Yep. Come on there, buddy. Stick with me. Four, five, six. Here's six damage to the face. Okay. We're going to intern. Yep. Seven counters on it now. <laughs> All right. We're going to try to end this one with Breach the Multiverse. Let's see if the opponent lets me do it. See, each player mills 10 cards for each player. Choose a creature or planes wire. Okay, let's go on. Let's move on. We know what it does. <laughs> We're going to go on. I, I want to be able to play it. There it is. And all the procs from all of our guys. 
Oh, he died. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I put Rona out and he just died. Should have held back the previous turn, but you know, beggars and choosers. Really wanted to do a breach of the multiverse, but <laughs> well, we got it in the air. We got it on the stack. That's the important part. Breach the multiverse was on the stack. What a match. Only two mana. Don't like the hand. Too expensive. This is better. Unseal the Necropolis probably goes to... I don't know, man. Like, this stuff all looks good. I don't want to get rid of any of it. Uh, but with two mana, we could do quite a bit. So this is going to look dumb, but I'm going to get rid of a mana. <laughs> I'm going to regret that one. Oh, man, am I going to regret that. This is definitely... It, it, I can't win. I put a mana on the bottom. I kept two lands. It's definitely a loss. So... Just keep that in mind as we move forward through this match that I just killed myself just there for your entertainment. This is for you. It's not for me. There's Junapar. And we lead off with Pelagi Archaeologist. Okay, we get card draw. Fantastic. And we only milled one land, so hopefully we draw land. 45% chance to draw land. Kami of Whispered Secrets. It's giving me a really easy block here. Okay. He pulls it back. Could tribute here. But we should do that on the opponent's turn. Really want to get Vohar working. And just holding up tribute is probably more important. And if we don't get a good chance to tribute, then of course we could always for Phyrex Phyrexian espionage. Oh man, words. Swear. I know how to speak. Sometimes it's hard. Oh, target player searches are what? Okay. Yeah, we, we'll, we'll do that. Thanks, man. Uh, <laughs> sure. Like, uh, <laughs> wow. Target player searches the library for him. Puts it onto the battlefield. Put two 1-1 one -one counters on one, up to one artifact or creature. Like, he didn't do any of that stuff. <laughs> he just gave me a land. Uh, I shouldn't laugh. Sometimes arena is clunky, especially if you're new. The interface is kind of bad sometimes. So that's what I'm guessing that that was all about. Um, we cannot espionage because it is a sorcery. It's not a great card. Well, let's kill. No, let's just Necropolis. Grab the scab. Goes to my turn. We want to Vohar. And now we can start discarding cards and drawing them. Tapped land. Never missing a land drop. Look at him. Come on, man. Do something good. I, I want a tribute. I want to make your Kami of Whispered Hopes a tribute to my plotting. Okay. He's going to search for a basic land and reveal it. Um, I think we got this one, guys. The arena gods were on my side today when, you know, he became the opponent. I feel bad, but also a win is a win. We're going to tribute anyway. We're going to kill it anyway, man. There it goes. Another Vohar. Ugh. We need to get our land. So we're going to do this. No land. Wow. Okay. We're going to keep digging. No land. This is incredible. <laughs> it's absolutely insane. We do have a Rusko. Though we probably won't get to that point in this game. It looks like we're just going to take it over here in just a few moments. Forest. Pick it up. No fight for you, sir. No fight. 
Should have let him kill it. We had the Vohar here. Now we could kick it. Kick it. Uh, oh, good, good. He kicked it. All right, good job, man. Good job. You did it. <laughs> well, we still don't have any lands. So we Rusko. And now we pass turn. This is a very slow deck. At least the way I've been playing it. And I was losing when I tried to be aggressive with this. So maybe no aggression. And this guy is so passive. Murder. Murder. Academy wall I want on the field. I think we get rid of... Yeah. Get rid of one of the scabs. He doesn't play enough cards to really warrant uh, anything like that. Murder. There we go. Opens up the field. Guess we should have played the Academy Wall first. It's okay. It's A-OK. -okay. Midnight Clock is on four. Mana. Recluse. He put the 1-1 one -one counter on him. Perfect. Murder. Sorry, man. <laughs> I am so sorry. That can go away. I don't really like that card. Swing in for four. Could discard this other Valhar, but... No reason. Okay. Fine. We're going to have a nice opportunity to uh, get it dead anyway. Swing in. It's probably blocking. Trade. No. Okay. Going after the clockmaker. Huh. Rona. And uh, we'll end turn here. My turn. Draws a mana. And there's seven. Miss Fatal. Could have Gix Command there, but again, it doesn't matter, guys. Um, yeah, this match is a another victory. We do have time for one more, and that makes me very happy because, you know what? I've learned how to play this deck now, and I've really... I, it's, it's a good deck. It's actually very good. We get to end on a Breach the Multiverse as well. Yes! And this time it didn't kill him. Awesome. Discard the mana. Oh, dang. It, it did kill him. Right, because the clockmaker does the same thing. Oh, well, hey, we got to cast Breach of the Multiverse twice. We do have time for one more, so let's get into the last match. A little slow, but then we'll have a pretty nice mana base. I guess we do Backwater, Island, and either... Falaji Archaeologists or hold up tribute. It depends on what deck our opponent is bringing to the table, to be honest. Okay, so we're probably holding up tribute. He's playing the Is It deck. Seems to be a very good deck. Like, this deck is very good. This deck, I think, is good. <laughs> I, I, I'm starting to like this now. Guess we don't even have to hold it up. We just use it now. Tapped out, buddy. And you know I'm playing the Demir. Blue. What's next? Kind of terrified. Nothing. Okay. I think we go with the Falaji Archaeologist. Okay, we have Unseal. That's fine. Starts to build out our land a little bit. It's going to be hard to run this guy down on cards. But if he's going to do stuff like that to an Archaeologist, I don't mind. That card's a dead card anyway at this point, so we 
just basically snuck a card out of his hand. He might have just wanted to put a card on the bottom of his library, though, so all the power to him. Mana. I kind of want that. So I'm going to copy it. Should have done it on his turn, but... <laughs> you know what? I did it that way, so... There you go. Volar. Kind of wanted land there. Could do on seal. Return the archaeologist. Could do espionage, go for land. Could do an academy wall. Let's do the academy wall. And then we pass. Meeting of the minds. Drawing some cards. Now we get to cast something that's cheaper. Or create a monkey. Flame of Anur. Wow. That is uh, pretty powerful. It's a human. So he just gets to draw the two. But that is very powerful indeed. So he's way back up there on cards. Don't know if we're going to be able to burn this guy out. But we could sure as hell try. Maybe get him out of uh, creatures. Yep, first strike, menace. All the things a growing boy needs. Ouch. Down to 19. Okay, go to my turn. Mana, thank God. Alright, this is three. We can almost get rid of this uh, barrel... And whatever, whatever. Hmm. Oh, oh, wrong guy. This one. Barrel and Curry Zev. And then, of course, we do Vohar. Vodalian Desecrator. We are nice and wide now. A lightning strike. And he gets a monkey. His legendary first mate, Ragavan. Okay. That certainly is strong. But is it strong enough? Wow, <laughs> it probably is. Scab. Don't have anything in the bin that can handle this stuff. So. No mana. Maybe we're just drawing some cards here. Yep, definitely draw. And discard this. Costs a little too much for my taste. We get a mana, we get a murder. We murder the Urabras. Okay. It looks like we're kind of safe for now. And no attacks. Riddle me this, riddle me that. Who's the better control player? Incubate three, draw a card. Okay, okay, more monkeys. Those are legendary though. We only get to keep the one. Oh boy, uh, now we have incubator tokens to deal with. The whole shebang. We're not looking bad. And alas, he's finally moved into the post phase and here we go, finally. Took him a while to figure out what he wanted to do. I get it. Couple of different things. Maybe we're doing this. One, two, three, four. Just in case he pumps us. We get a couple of procs. And even if he has like a lightning bolt or something, we still get to kill the electrostatic infantry because we paid four for it. Uh, we are going to play this. We're going to grab 
the archaeologist and the drake. We're going to take that action as well. And we're going to dump off one of these drakes. Okay. Archaeolo or, uh, <laughs> electrostatic infantry is down. And we can't actually attack yet. But we are now ahead. I thought this was going to be a much harder matchup than it is has been so far still a lot of time in the match here comes the Phyrexian incubator token mana Gandalf the gray yep as said there's a lot of time left Gandalf the gray is quite the card and we finally draw Rusko is it time to play Rusko though or should we archaeologist One, one, two, three, four. If that's not a spell in his hand, we could kill Gandalf the Grey. Oh, wait, no. That's the wrong dude. Okay, we will Rusko then. Get nice and wide. Still cannot attack with those two. But we're getting to the point. We got the Halo Charged Scab, which could attack really nicely into the opponent. Uh, <laughs> the thing is, it's a little bit dangerous. Rusko, you could kill him. You could kill that. <laughs> I mean, you could kill any of my things. We just got trash creatures. The Jitsu Amplifier. He picks up the Archaeologist, which is perfect. He comes in with Gandalf. Do it like this. Huh. Attacks the barrel. Copy the instance, the lightning strike. It's gonna hit the barrel again. So barrel and Kari Zev is gonna die. He makes his choices, comes on in, we grow the thing, we grow our mana base, dropping the archaeologist, we get breach, and we could cast breach. Yep, we'll draw a card. We will discard scab. Yeah, discard the scab. Um, I would love to have Erebrask. No, 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 no. That's stupid. Electrostatic Infantry seems really strong. Third Path Iconoclast, though, seems even stronger. So that's what we're getting from him. From us, we're going to get... Oh, boy, oh, boy. What do we want? Another Rusko. Clockmaker. Bam. There it is. And <laughs> no attacks. Just going to have to wear him down. Sixteen cards remaining in our deck. Twenty-five for our opponent. What if we just deck him? Huh. Weird attack. So he's got more magic in his hand. Um... No on that. If you want to kill the monkey, you can. There's a shore up. He untaps Gandalf, huh? Okay, that's 100% fine. I am going to get that Gandalf with the Vesuvian Mist. Four, so I need five, nine. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, we have enough. We have enough. Okay, so do this. Pick up your Gandalf. We get Prox. I'm going to decline to take that action. Okay, you picked him up. That's a good boy. Now we will kick for XPCN Espionage. Oh, man. This is a starter deck. <laughs> Discard your Gandalf 
And uh, we are looking like a dream now. No attacks, you're fine. Yep, down to 13 cards, but golly gee, is this fantastic. Rails reinforcements. Oh, we are not scared at all. At all. There is nothing that could change the outcome of this game from this point forward. This is five for Gandalf the Grey. Then we we already have an archaeology wall. We're going to put... We're going to do a smart. Uh, so, Drake. Now, we're going to tribute here. And then we're going to deal three damage. Wait, I didn't do it smart. <laughs> Discard that. We did not do it smart. Whatever. I'm going to give him the old oops. We're not scooping from this just because of that. That is not a scoopable offense. Because, oh, look, I did this on purpose. Now he can't block with his uh, Barl and Kari Zev. See, that was on purpose. Easy peasy. You know what? I kind of want that to die. Perfect. Perfect. Two more turns, and then you're going to have to deal with a whole new hand. Yep. Totally fine. Don't know why the opponent is still here. Man, each opponent. I have to remember that. 11. It. Oh, I thought he was gone. <laughs> okay, he is still there. Rona's Vortex. Actually, cancel that real quick. Play this. Now, Rona's Vortex. Put that on the bottom of your library. And we're going to copy that. And we're going to do it here. Decline to take the action. They both go away. And now we, I think we're just all swinging. I don't see any reason not to. Guess he's going to block the third path. Iconoclast. Totally fine. Everything is expendable. Remember that. Good life lesson. Everything is expendable. All right. Let's draw seven new cards. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. That is fantastic. Kills the Drake. That's fine. And he cycles. I don't know why he's still here, guys. I really don't. This game has been over for a long time, and he's finally out. All right. Oh, man. What a way to finish it off. Man, oh, man, oh, man. Let's go to a post-game wrap. So if you've stuck around this long, I'm sure you know that I absolutely love this deck as a starter deck. It is... Whew, it takes a while to figure out exactly how to use this. I've never used Rusko Clockmaker before because it's an alchemy card. And uh, yeah, you know you know how that goes, uh, alchemy is. But they have another broken card in alchemy, which is Rusko Clockmaker, which is just brutal. This guy is definitely on the block for an upgrade video, but we'll probably do it in his historic or maybe standard depending let me know in the comments below whether you want it to be in historic or if you want it to be in standard but i oh wait it can't be in standard alchemy oh geez oh i can't believe i said that out loud but let me know but overall this deck is has been my favorite so far this thing takes a little bit of time to figure out exactly how you're supposed to play this but 
what you're supposed to do is you're just literally stalling the game, getting things with return value onto the field, and getting Rusko to do his thing and to reset everything and do it all over again with the incredible Midnight Clock. It is fantastic. I really, really enjoyed the Midnight Clock. I really enjoy Rusko, and I really enjoyed this deck. Um, I think that this is, oh man, mwah. I love it. Now, will you win every game with this? No. The fast techs are probably going to beat you, and you need to make sure you have some sort of removal in the early game. Uh, and Verona's Vortex really held some weight. Um, the Falaji Archaeologist actually held its weight as well. <laughs> Tribute to Urborg was pretty good in this format, and Murder was just fine as a removal. The whole deck works really well together, and it almost doesn't matter what you have as long as it's a combination of spells and creatures that get more spells and synergies with the graveyard you get those things going together and you're gonna have a good time with this deck <laughs> before this recording i wasn't quite sure how to use this deck but now that i am aware of how to use this deck i really enjoy it Thank you for joining today. Make sure once again to like the video and subscribe to the channel and we will come at you with episode four. Bye.